is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, Nace. Welcome back to Get in the Trunk. Season four, part one of Impossible Landscapes. An incredible adventure with incredible players that has gotten into a crazy place as we really rock it towards the end of this thing. Could be tonight, could be. We'll see what decisions the players make and who will survive into part two. I, I guess I'll kick this off with I've got good news and I've got bad news. And I should say that it's both just personal to me. So you guys, none of you have anything to worry about. Uh, but what do you want to hear about first? The good news or the bad news? Uh, only like the, the good bad. news. Yeah, just the good news. <laughs> Withhold just the, the good. bad news uh, and I just say, tell us the good news. I say bad first. I'm that kind of person. I always take the bad first. Yeah. Okay. Bad news first. Last night, in the middle of the night, something happened to my entire HVAC system and it is completely <sighs> shut down. Oh, and man. I woke up and it was 65 degrees in the house. Oh and no. And I have oh. children and it, it's the coldest days of the year thus far, obviously. Oh, since summer, since spring. Whatever. And you were already in such a great mood late, late <laughs> last oh, night. Oh my God, last late night. Late last was, night was so fun for everybody. Sydney was really a huge part of my <laughs> mood last night. Uh, as we were recording Legacy of the Ancients and at midnight, she just decided to turn off her internet. For my no internet reason. shut down. My entire internet shut down for apropos of nothing. No reason. So. Yeah, and, it, and the one thing that I could count on when we finally got that episode done at one in the morning, was that my HVAC system would work. <laughs> that uh, was you and I. You're that's just the one forward. thing I could count on. Well, I woke up and it's busted. So, mm. and I called and they can't get here till Friday. So, perfect. It's going to just be a couple of days of dealing with, uh, you know, no environmental controls in my place. Oh, it's God. it's not a big deal. It's Sucks. just it's just slightly bad news. The good news comes right right out of it, which is. My room finally feels comfortable for streaming. <laughs> it is always so suffocatingly hot in here. And now I feel like I am in like the late show studio. You know, like you walk yeah. in and you'd be like cold. Like it's so cold in here. Yeah. Uh, I finally feel like I'm in a proper streaming studio. So it's uh, <laughs> take the good with the bad. Yeah. I, I, had a, I had a always friend. Uh, I had a friend who was uh, a featured extra on 30 Rock. And she she said that like, uh, Alec Baldwin would come in. He would shoot his scenes on like Wednesdays. Like he would come in to Silver Cup and shoot all of his scenes on one day. And on that day, the set would be down to like 58 degrees because that's how he wanted it. Wow. So like Wednesdays, it would be freezing. And it was <laughs> the rest of the time. It was like normal. Paul was a sweater. He's a sweater. Well, <laughs> my mom is a big fan of a freezing cold house. Like she keeps her house mm. at like 66 degrees in, in the winter. <laughs> and uh, it's very, very cold. <laughs> like especially overnight. You're like, oh, oh, I mean, if you can get the proper yeah. coverage, though. You just it's sleep the best. like a baby. You sleep it's like a baby when it's cold yeah. around you, but you're warm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is funny how like five degrees makes a difference. Like you're like 65 yeah. degrees. And in the summer, you're like, that's perfect. Yeah, like, right. It's, right. You know, it's so strange. But as soon as it gets a little chilly out, like I was saying the other day when it was pouring rain, just pissing rain in New York City. I could not get the chill out of me. Like I was outside. I had my jackets on. I was like, God, it's so fucking cold. And I told Skid. All I want to do is be under six blankets playing video games. Yeah. Like, I yeah. can't stand on my hardwood floor. It's too cold. I'm like, oh, I need my oh. slippers. Like, and it's what? 65 degrees? It's not that bad. Yeah, but I know. <laughs> well, you're just not, you're not acclimated yet. We have to get acclimated every year. We have to get yeah. like re-acclimated. Yeah. It's like, it'll be 58 degrees. I'll be like, where are my gloves? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like 58 degrees in March. I'm like, who's playing baseball? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, there's shorts and flip-flops. Like, yeah. hey, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Francis, do you have, you must have just air conditioning, right? Like none of these places no. have heating in Hawaii, it, right? No, nothing. And there's, I mean, most places don't even have air conditioning. All these buildings really? were like built. Yeah. All, like my building was built in like the fifties or something. Like it's, it, it's all old, like, um, like army or military surplus buildings that just basically to get turned into apartments. 
So, uh, yeah, there's hardly any AC unless you get them like window units installed. But I just have a big old, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, ceiling fan. Ceiling fan. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, trade winds, baby. <laughs> yeah, sure. trade it's like San Diego. Baby. Like, none of yeah. those houses have AC either. It's just they don't need it. They just have oh, yeah. like ceiling fans and stuff. Yeah. Well, I feel right. like in, if in I'm not white. mistaken, you have oil heat. Is that right? Does oh? a big truck come up and stick a tank yeah. like a tanker pull up oh and yeah stick a hose in the side of your house and f- don't you worry your house is going to explode <laughs> no it's <laughs> been doing it for a long long time um, and say. the best part about it it's really really cheap yeah. um <laughs> like we don't a get guy bills comes up a on a horse and buggy and like <laughs> a big old tank and it's like i have your oil sir <laughs> i mean but everyone out here has oil heat like i, I see 20 different oil trucks around constantly on people's houses <laughs> It's Do you just, go outside of your your front door each evening and light your oil lamp <laughs> with like a, a little, little fire? Escape? It's so funny. That's it's. I don't think it's that strange. I think it's just that's how it's that's how it's normally done. It's just newer houses don't use oil heat. But uh, is I it grew whale up with oil? oil? Heat. No, it's. Uh, <laughs> I pay a little extra for the bio heat because then it's a uh, tax write off. But uh, you know, we had central air installed when we first moved in, and that has uh, really helped. But it's just. Everything is crazy expensive, so I'm laughing about your HVAC going down because, like, this shit happens all the time. It's just, like, thousands of dollars out yeah. the window. Constantly. Every oh, time. new water heater? Thousands yeah. of dollars. I called the guy, and he's just like, we'll be over. Uh, we can come over on Friday. It's $250 to walk in the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, and then we'll evaluate and tell you what it costs to fix it. <laughs> just like, oh. It's like, by the way, this phone call is $75. Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. It's really frustrating. But like, it's just, it's my own fault. Like I have no one to blame but myself for never being fully trained in HVAC repair. Like they have you. <laughs> they have you. What else can you do? You can't, guy's money. you know what I mean? You can't be like, ah, it's too expensive. I'll just take care of it. Like, yeah, I can't go fix a furnace. <laughs> it's it's funny, it's doing funny that. to think Joe walks downstairs with a huge wrench like a cartoon character is like clank, 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 clank. clank. Got this. <laughs> also, Troy, I had oil heat growing up. Maybe it's like a older house too, New York yeah. thing, but I always had oil and the big truck would show up and they would pump the oil into the, the boiler, whatever, the oil yeah, boiler. It's like a little thing boiler. outside of the house. They just... Yeah. yeah right well, I'll, I'll tell you what my experience of it is and why I think it's it's a little odd. And it's just because of my home buying experience in New Jersey, which was most of the places that we looked at had oil heat before and got it updated and replaced. That was the usual case. So like it's in my house too. There's two big holes in the side of the basement wall that have been like cemented over. And you can just tell where it used to be. These two big pipes would come into a tank in the basement that held oil. So I know that it was very routine, but most of these places like our realtor would be like, you got to get a scan and check and see if that oil tank is still under the ground. Cause it'll kill your children. Like oh, they're like super <laughs> creeped out about poisoning all of the, the ground underneath the house house with like an old oil tank that's dug under the ground <laughs> and it just got me super paranoid that it's like you know that it's just basically poison in your house i don't know <laughs> well that's if it's a an old defunct tank and yeah, a, yeah. an operational tank is fine but yeah no that is a big danger i think there's like it could be lead or something that could yeah. be very very dangerous um and they back in the day they're like ah bury it <laughs> right, they were like, oh, bury it. And then, and th- here's another where they, they tack on the money is they're just like, you got to pay somebody $500 to come out and just scan to see if there's one under the ground. So, you know, God. a guy comes out, he's like, boop, 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 you're good. That'll right. be $500. <laughs> That'll be $500. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I guess I'm paying for peace of mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. It's your own fault for not owning a metal detector, Joe. You can only hey. blame yourself. Yep. You could have done I truly, that. I, I, I say these things like I'm complaining that there's something wrong with the system when really it's just, I don't know how to do anything. And that's my own fault. I should learn uh, how to fix a furnace. I should learn how to find, dig up an oil tank. <laughs> 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 but instead, I'd rather play games with my friends. That's better. It is better. Uh, speaking of heat, last episode was hot. Oh, God, oh yeah. my goodness. I'm actually... I say that because I thought it was a really good episode and I really enjoyed so many moments of it. I even tweeted about it after. I was like, that was one of the best moments I've ever had gaming. It's amazing. Oh, God, so much. So um, much fun. What I don't mean to imply is that it was hot because Troy and Sydney <laughs> decided to make everyone 
feel horribly uncomfortable. <laughs> and bring I think it turned you on. It, it, it was also hot. It was hot. Yeah, it was hot. It was, that? it was hot. I'm here for it. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with If this was any <laughs> other form of entertainment, we would have done this long ago. Oh, 100%. Yeah. If this was a uh, written TV show, this would be obvious from the start. It would have happened way sooner. But in, in a tabletop every show, role every game, single one of our shows, this would have happened. <laughs> when you sit around and say, I think we want to get into some romance, everyone's like, oh! <laughs> yeah. No, Can't do it. Yeah, I don't want to do it. What's, but I think it's a good thing that it finally happened. What's funny yeah. is it started. It started to happen like the thing that happens with TV shows, where fans are like, "I'm predicting this," because Nash members were asking me. They were like. So what's going to happen when <laughs> Roger and Vicky hook up? And I'm like, well, yeah. really? yes, uh, yes. At true. one of the live shows, there was a multiple, vibe. multiple people were like, are you guys going to like role play that out? And I'm like, well, one, it hasn't happened yet. So anything I could die, anything could happen. But two, I mean, if it happens, then yeah, like then you, you, yes. And, you know, you, you play it out. So I'm glad that it did happen as naturally as it did, though. It was really good. It was like, yeah, I, I, chef's kiss on, on how that happened. And yeah, it's been laid in from the start. It goes back to like, I've been dropping that in since the beginning. Like it goes back to when you grabbed her and dove into a bush with her. And the guy at the bar that was rude to her and he yeah. just took it yeah, out totally. of it. Like it, it's, totally. it's all there. Um, yeah. So it's fun when things finally, uh, you get that payoff. Uh, it was yeah. just like yeah. Jim and Pam in the office. Yeah, took four seasons. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Jim reminds me of Cumstone. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Total, Total Cumstone. <laughs> Total Cubstone type. Uh, well, uh, by brief summary, that was obviously uh, a, a big focus of the episode. But there was also the sort of the the blowing off steam of what had all just gone down and what you guys experienced as what we said was roughly six hours in the night floors, but in the real world, no time passed, essentially. So that Saturday night, you go off to blow out steam and everybody just gets drunk, including Vicky for the first time who had been sober for two years, breaking that sobriety because she can't handle what's in that building. She says to Roger when they're sitting on the steps, and that, that was my favorite scene, and she says, quote, um, I just want to destroy everything in that building. You can see it's just, it's pervaded Vicky's mind so deeply that it's it's disturbing her uh, to a great degree. So everybody just needs a drink. And you guys, you get drunk together and it's actually kind of fun. But Bobby at one point sees the bartender as if it's a marionette, right? Strings coming <laughs> off of the bartender as, as they're oh. serving. Neil seems to be hearing a voice, a voice that seems to be either repeating things back to him or even in the case of the final moments of the episode, responding to he, things Neil is saying. So what is that about? But ultimately, it's Roger that takes Vicky back to his place for a hookup. And uh, what were the last thing that we see is them walk into Roger's house and we see a car comes creeping around the corner, a car that may have been following the cab that they were in. It stops out front of the house and a man cloaked in shadow. We could tell it's a man by the build, but we can't tell who it is. Gets out of this car and looks up at the house. And that is where we ended last episode. This week, we're going to pick up. Mm. Man, I've gone back and forth on so much of this. Uh, all right. <coughs> We're going to open with this. Fade up on morning. The next morning. Light is just barely coming through around the edges of a curtain. Enough that it highlights sort of a slash of light across Bobby's face. In bed. Passed out. But that light just seems to be sitting right on his eye and it it wakes you up as you sit up or open your eyes one of the first things that you see is right next to you on your end table you see a brown paper bag that was not there when you went to bed And okay. it's just like a neatly folded, like a lunch bag 
small brown paper bag folded and just sitting next to your bed. I got to open it. I'm Bobby reaches for the bag. <laughs> you sit up blinking. You, you reach for the bag and you feel there's a little bit of weight in there. Open it up and look inside and you see a slip of paper and a plastic pill bottle. <laughs> yes. Pills. <laughs> I don't care where these came That's from. Like, I'm just happy. You know? <laughs> if you recall, Bobby ran out of his pills last night during his foray into the night floors. Inside this slip of paper simply says the Starlight Deli 8 a.m. <laughs> and there is a bottle of Adderall. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like Santa came early this year. This. <laughs> what do you want to do? Well, can do, do I recognize the handwriting? Is this hand, handwritten? Can I do I roll for that or? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Roll an intelligence times five, maybe, unless you have a skill that you think is more relevant. No, I guess intelligence. Forensics? Yeah, um, Would forensics for like forensics. Forward, uh, handwriting? I don't know. Um, yeah, you oh, can roll that if it's better. Forensics. I, uh, I got to go with intelligence. I don't got any forensics. <laughs> uh, but, okay, I've got a 28, 28 under 60. You do not recognize the handwriting. Okay. It doesn't resemble anyone you know. But the, the Adderall's legit. Is it? Is it? Okay. Well, let me, let me, uh, we gotta find what's out. What's your pharma? Uh, oh, <laughs> pharma. Is it zero? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, cause I feel like at this point, cause Bobby got wasted just to kind of get through the di- the night. But at this point he's needing something to pull himself together if he's going to make it and just stay focused. So he's, he's going for that Adderall. He, he's just going to, he's just going to, he's going to wing it. He needs it. He needs it. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a con times five. You're going to take what? Two pills, something like that. Yeah. Just, just two yeah. pills. Yeah. Oh God. Con times five. Oh, 55 over 45. Ooh, that is a critical <laughs> fail. Oh, oh it man. sure is. Oh, what did I take? <laughs> Everything seems fine. Oh. Oh, God. No. You pop those pills, and you have this note in unknown handwriting that says the Starlight Deli, 8 a.m. All right. And it's... And it's about 7.30. About 7.30. Okay. Um, Bobby's getting dressed. He's getting dressed. And he's going to go down to Starlight Deli. All right. And you know the Starlight Deli to be kind of over near the apartment uh, right. where, you know, where you guys have been working. Uh, so Bobby puts this note down, pops a couple pills, and starts <laughs> getting dressed. Let's go. With that, we'll cut to Roger's place. <laughs> we fade up on Roger's bed. There's two people in that bed. Roger Cumstone and Victoria Ricci. Now, Sydney, I would like you to roll (laughs) (laughs) to see if you threw up and passed out or if you guys, quote, boned. (laughs) As you said last week. I Uh, forgot. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> and then we'll role play the result as the two of you wake up. And then roll I'm rolling both. this just like a flat or... <laughs> you said to me, you were like, I'm going to roll to see if I threw up and pass out or if we bone. But what am I rolling 50, it 50? against? 50-50? It could, it's a luck roll. Okay. So which side of the luck, luck do you want to be on? <laughs> uh, I guess we should play Delta Green rules and be on the lower side of the luck. Wait, For what? No, the yeah, question what is, what do you want to happen? <laughs> Right. Oh, me uh, as a player? You as a player. Oh, mm, um, oh, I want them to bone. I want them to bone. Yeah. All right, then 50 and under will be boned. 51 <laughs> okay. and over will be throw up and pass out. 
Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> oh, this is big. 26. Oh, Bing, oh, they oh, bone. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Troy smoking his cigarette. <laughs> 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 A uh, skit just rattled off an amazing <laughs> series uh, of gifts. Oh, you got to go to the YouTube great. video and just watch that. Oh, oh, my, oh my God. Uh, oh. <laughs> you should know, in spite of Roger's um, violent tendencies and uh, just overall aggressive nature. Uh, He's a bottom. A, He's a tender. <laughs> he is a tender lover. He's a tender lover. <laughs> He's, he Gentle. was... Gentle he giant. was he was so so gentle and so delicate <laughs> and ensured that Vicky had multiple orgasms. <laughs> Can you roll? He even considered Can you roll um, for finishing. orgasms? Can you roll to see if you yeah, maybe yeah, have orgasms? Yeah, you know, I'll a do D twenty. See how many, how many Vicky had. <laughs> you had 17 orgasms. <laughs> oh, that's a new record. 17! <laughs> Vicky is in pain. It's too many. <laughs> <laughs> 17 or <laughs> good lord um okay yeah and so, so just uh, yeah we'll open bed. with you guys and we all now know what happened last night uh, but, but we don't know yet right the viewing audience doesn't know so let's let's play it out imagine does Vicky Rogers. even know <laughs> that's knows. a very that is a question. very good question and it's I not mean, very funny skip but no, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not being funny. Like, I mean, know. Does like she even she, remember? She got drunk. Totally. Yeah. And oh, I yeah. mean, like, this is the first time she's drank in two years. And the reason that she is in AA is because she drinks too much <gasps> and completely blacks out and has no idea what she has done. So I don't know if she knows, but she is fully. Na- I mean, she quickly realizes she's fully naked in Roger's bed. And if she slowly wakes up, she's like. <laughs> it is a basement uh, one bedroom apartment um, and there's a shower stall in the living room <laughs> like right next to the TV uh, you know like five feet from the TV uh, it's just kind of like a long apartment if you if you wake up and turn your head and, like there's no there's very little light a little streaming in from like a uh, a window that looks out at like foot level with the a back alley, um, <laughs> and there's a bathroom uh, down the end. But Roger is uh, obviously naked as well, and just enormous. <laughs> is he asleep? Does Vicky wake up before Roger? Are you still asleep? No, Roger's always awake. <laughs> His alertness uh, won't allow him to wake up after you. Okay. Vicky, Vicky, you open your eyes first, and you you go. Oh no! And uh, you see this oh, uh, pr- preposterously large, hulking human next to you, and uh, near the foot of the bed, uh, you also see a, a cage and a parrot. <laughs> it happened to all of us. One time she or <laughs> doesn't know if Roger's awake or not, but she is like slowly getting out of the bed, like softly putting the covers down, looking for her clothes. <laughs> uh, and she stands up and she starts to like quietly kind of like gather her things around the room. Roger says, uh, good morning. Uh, hey, um, good morning. I didn't know that you were awake. I was trying not to wake you. I've been awake for about an hour. I, uh, I was watching you sleep. I know that sounds weird, (laughs) but I just, uh, I was watching you sleep. Um, what, what time is it? Do you know? It's, uh, 0635. <laughs> um, I don't, um, I don't want to, you know, like hold up your day or anything and I can just, 
you know, I gotta, I kind of gotta, um, uh, I have like a, I have a whole. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, are you hungry? Um, honestly, I, I kind of feel like I'm maybe going to throw up. Um, could I just like get a, like a glass of water or something? Yeah, of course. Um, and he gets up and, uh, just walks butt ass naked into the kitchen. <laughs> um, and, uh, starts pouring you water. But before he leaves, he goes, Oh, uh, that's Jimmy. <laughs> and he points to the African gray parrot. <laughs> uh, and Vicky has on like a bra and her skirt, uh, and is like looking at the parrot. Uh, <laughs> and he goes, Give it to me! Give it to me! Give it to me! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man! And she is now trying to re recall what happened exactly, and she knows they went to the bar. She knows she drank, um, and she says, "Roger, what time did we did we come back here together?" Uh, yeah, yeah, we both had a little. Uh too much to drink. Um, and we took a cab, got in around two, quarter past two. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and uh, as you can see, neither of us slept much. And there's just clothing all the way from the doorway <laughs> leading into the bedroom. <laughs> and Roger's like putting on a pair of boxers. Um, thank you for... Um, taking care of me last night. Um, I don't. Um, I don't drink, and I shouldn't drink. So, um, I don't know why I feel like I need to apologize to you. I'm not really apologizing to you, but if I, um, I don't want to give you the wrong idea. I, I if I said anything, um. Or did anything. Um, I like you, Roger. I just want to be professional with you and, and make sure that... I don't know why I'm saying this. Um, yeah, no, you don't... Uh, you don't have to apologize to me. I uh, had a feeling that you were struggling. If you tell me that you never want to drink again. And I'll make sure that alcohol never touches your lips. <laughs> <laughs> but as for uh, doing anything that you didn't want to, uh, I don't think you did. But that's not really up to me to say. Right. I appreciate you. So thank you for looking out for me. And I know that you were. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean it like that. I, I like you. I like you a lot. Um, but I gotta go. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, obviously I'll see you. Right. Because we got to... Well, we still Stuff are... Stuff with the, the, the night floors. Right. Obviously. <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> right. Um. Well, uh... Okay. Uh. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I will. C I'll call. You call. I'll, 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 yeah, we'll call. Well, I'll call. <laughs> I'll call. <laughs> well, I'll do the um the pager. I'll. I, I'll when I, we need to. 
Yeah. I'll page everybody. Actually, oh, yeah, page her. And he like turns around and, and goes over to uh, an end table on the couch. There's just like, it's a mess. It's <laughs> the only thing he has is close to a desk. And he's like, <laughs> sorry, I just, I moved in here. Kind of recently, it's just a <laughs> six months ago. <laughs> um, and he writes down his actual phone number. He says, you, you can call me anytime. Thank you, Roger. And she finishes putting on her jacket and stuff. And she knows she looks like shit, but she's not going to like go to the bathroom and fix her makeup and stuff. She just needs to get out of here. And um, she puts a hand on the shoulder and kisses him on the cheek. Uh, and says, I'll, I will call you. And she leaves his apartment. And right as you go out, he's like, Victoria. Yeah. I like you too. <laughs> okay. And she leaves. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, you old sweet. <laughs> so you old softy. Yeah, yeah. softy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's come up on let's come up on the Starlight Deli. Fade up on the deli, uh, and Bobby coming up to it from outside. Um, not too far from the apartment, just a few blocks away, uh, on 33rd and 3rd, right on the corner. <clears throat> um, can I check and see if anyone's following or? Yeah. Roll yep. alertness. Yep. Ooh, 10 under 21 or 41. Ooh. Nice. nice. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you do not get the sense that you're being followed. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Bobby takes a look around and goes into the diner. You go into this Dell H. The bells ring, uh, and you see that there's a, 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 a small morning crowd um, uh, in this place getting breakfast sandwiches, that kind of stuff. And uh, there are a few stacks of, uh, of <clears throat> just you know, crackers and chips and, and that kind of stuff. And then behind that, there's a row of refrigerators and a small sitting area. And, uh, you see a man that you recognize sitting at a table in the back, uh, a two top all the way in the back of the place, right before it kind of like goes into the back, back area of the deli. And you can see that there's kind of like stacked tables and stacked chairs back there, you know, kind of a, an area where you're not supposed to be, but this one table out in front, uh, He's sitting there and he's looking at you and he just nods and you recognize Agent Marcus from the park. Oh. Her contact. Right. Our handler. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Fuck. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, Bobby nods, walks over to the table and has a seat right across from Marcus. You holding it together? We're, uh, yeah, we're, we're holding it together. Well, it doesn't really seem like your team is. They, uh, you know, Maybelline and Messiah took off together last night. Huh? Stayed in his place. You know about this? N no, we, uh, we were all a little banged up. We had, uh, we had some steam to blow off, so we had quite a few drinks. And uh, wh wh Why? what do you mean? Why did you have some steam to blow off? What happened in there? <sighs> wait, wait, we... wait, 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 wait! Don't tell me. Don't, don't be specific. <laughs> um, What's going on in there? <clears throat> we uh, we were able to discern where Abigail went. And uh, we we followed, and we were there for for some time. <clears throat> Where did you leave the city? Uh, in a sense, yes. I'm. Uh, I don't know how much of this you want to know. <laughs> 
I, I, I guess I don't need to know. But if you know, was she there? <sighs> she was at one time there, but she was long gone by the time we were able to track her down. Dead. Unclear. Okay, but but whatever, whatever kidnapped her, can you can you get rid of it? I sure as hell hope so. Oh, what's whatever, the- whatever's in there, it's 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 something I've never seen before. Oh, well, what's the plan? <clears throat> well, uh, we're going to meet up today to, to figure that out. But the plan is, in my mind, to destroy the place. Destroy what place? Her place? The whole damn building. The whole building? Wait, this thing is... It's the whole building? It's, it's... It's... It's like a crossroads of some kind. It's... It's not just a building. It's... It's it's a gateway. It's a... Some kind of limbo. It's... We don't know. We don't... We don't really know. But... It's... It's, it's taken Abigail and... Probably several others... It almost took us. Took you? Took you where? (sighs) Unknown. Well, if it's a gateway and you think destroying the building will close it, then then we can. I mean, people live there, though, don't they? Is anybody (sighs) else? Can you get the people out of there? (laughs) <laughs> that's I, I, I honestly don't know we we were going to plan meet today to plan out our next steps but uh, it doesn't under, it doesn't seem to be or the people who are in there don't seem to want to leave they seem happy to be there happy Happy and like they, they, they know about what happened to Abigail and they're happy. It's, it's, it's not clear. We encountered one person there who told us about Abigail, told us she was there. She was willingly there. Okay. I just, I, I don't know. I don't, I've never experienced anything like this. I don't know how to handle this. This is. Okay. Okay. Um, well, look, if you think that the building needs to be uh, demolished or something, I mean, that's that's no easy task. Uh, maybe there's something that... You said you're meeting today? Yes. Okay. Well, be very careful. And be careful of those two. I really thought Maybelline was sharp and on it but something's something's going on they're breaking protocols and they might not be in the right mindset to make these decisions so you gotta be you gotta be strong here okay makeshift you gotta be strong strong for for who what what, what, what's with you gotta make the right decision for for Delta Green just don't get bowled over is all I'm saying you seem like you know what has to get done make sure it gets done understood um let's meet tomorrow you have your meeting today make a decision and let's meet tomorrow right all of us right sure yeah all of us 
and let's finish this thing off. Close the gate. Close it. And he just like starts to get up and starts to walk out. And if you've got nothing else to say, we'll fade out. <laughs> Your guy's intention was all to meet back at the apartment, right? I don't know. Did we say that? I don't think we picked a location. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, I, oh, did, did you we, pick a location? Yeah. I don't know why. I don't remember. I just a don't remember. I don't was it? I was, was it drunk. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't face. remember. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, we said we were going to meet. I don't remember exactly the location though. I don't think we said a location. I think we just yeah. said we will re like reconvene and beep each other or something. We, we were going to go over the books, go over the books and pour through them. Oh yeah, because okay. we had the uh, yeah the world history book and we could be at the library. We could meet at a diner. Wouldn't hurt to be at a library in case we needed to cross reference something. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we meet at the library? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back to the NYPL. Is it open on Sunday? I think so. To tourists and stuff. We're okay. residents. Comes Comestone will get us in there. Um, <laughs> smashes a window with his pistol. <laughs> <laughs> the forty second Street Library. You go in the back. Look around. Uh, I'm looking at their. <laughs> I'm looking at their current hours uh, just to see if it's at all yeah. helpful. Uh, current hours. They are uh, closed on Monday. Open on Sundays. Ah, oh, nice. interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, see, people nice. got to read on the weekends. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> but not on Mondays. On Mondays. <laughs> okay. okay, then let's go right there. Let's just open up in the library uh all of you guys in there and uh we'll have the th we'll have um so what did you do vicky did you like go home get freshened up yeah she goes home she gets freshened up she uh she wants to call her sponsor um she really feels like she needs to call sarah she also feels like she needs to call christopher um, you have multiple messages from Christopher on your answering machine that start with like, Hey, uh, just making sure you're all right. You didn't show up today. And then, uh, it, it continues to like, Hey, I'm getting worried. Um, if, uh, if work just got too much, like I get it, that's fine. But like, please call me tonight before you crash so that I'm not worried. And at the end of the night, it's like a message that's like, are you still not in? Are you still working? And he sounds like tense and like a little scared. Uh, she can't talk to Sarah right now. She cannot talk to her sponsor about a relapse. So she's going to call Christopher because it's easier to fight than to have a real conversation. Um, so she knows it's probably going to be a fight, but she calls Christopher. Okay. Hello? Hey, it's me. <laughs> v, what the fuck? Sorry, sorry. What Don't happened? Ye stop yelling. I'm sorry that I didn't get your messages. I wasn't home, okay? Well, where were you? I was working. You didn't come home all night? You are working all night? No, I wasn't working all night, Christopher. I was working late, and then I went out. Your voice sounds deep. <laughs> scratchy. You smoking too many cigarettes? What do you care if I'm smoking too many cigarettes, Christopher? What the fuck do you care? What? Why are you calling me? I'm calling I'm you so because you no-showed me yesterday. You I'm were supposed so to get a slice, and you were being real nice about it, and then you just left me standing there like a schmuck. I didn't mean to leave you standing there like a schmuck. That wasn't my intention. I got caught up and I simply forgot to call. I'm sorry. That's my fault. But you don't need to call me 40 times a day and, and check in on me, okay? I'm just making sure you're all right. You seem strung out at the park and I'm just trying to make sure you're all right. That's all. I seem all. strung out at the park. Why are you so concerned with me, okay? I'm working hard. Because I love you, V. That's why I'm so concerned with you. I'm sorry. This is my curse. I love you, and I'm worried about you. It's a curse to love you. me. It's a curse to love me. Nice yeah, one, Christopher. Yeah, you made it that way. Really? You know what, Christopher? Don't call me unless it's about the divorce papers. Okay? <sighs> the... Wait a second. What? I'm busy. I have to go. It's my only weekend where I can get shit done. So What? All right. 
Have it your way. But be careful, all right? You're working too much. Then he hangs up. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, she's so mad. It's not how she wanted to go, but she's so mad. I, she's so I think you owed him some damage. And I did from missing yeah. the the pizza. Yeah. I blew yeah. him off, and I that was yeah, me. And I, and I think that like we said, oh, it was just because you blew him off. We'll have it spent there. But then that's the lingering yeah. like effect at those points. Um, okay, so yeah, that that's Christopher. And then do you head to the library? Yeah, she gets ready and freshens up and goes to the library. Okay, then let's open up in the library. Uh, Neil already there unless skid you had anything you wanted to do that morning you know scene wise uh before that otherwise i just imagined you being the one that was kind of like pouring over the books and then bringing them to the library yeah yeah i'll just that's fine all right so we open up at the library and we'll have uh roger vicky and neil there uh and you guys are there for a little bit before bobby arrives you're talking bobby's just a little bit behind and um Let's say that, um, can we say that Neil took a, a world without doors? The, the book that Vicky had originally taken? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, she like gave study, it to him. Right? Yeah, she yeah. gave it to him. Okay. So, Neil, I'll tell you, and you know, you kind of can kind of share this, like you studied this even maybe a little tipsy last night. Yeah. Uh, and then this morning, and we'll say that it's like afternoon now by the time you guys actually got everything together and met. Um, early afternoon that uh, that a world without doors is it's about a little girl named Abby <laughs> and her journeys in this magical land and the land is just sort of referred to but never named this magical land and she travels there by drowning herself oh <laughs> Oh, the drowned kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so she dr when she drowns herself, she appears in this magical world and can go on adventures. And it, uh, it is essentially a world without doors. And when she's there, she battles a nameless foe called the Phantom to try <sighs> to free people from the dance. The Phantom <laughs> keeps people in the dance and she tries to fight the Phantom. And uh, the dance is a, a music that, like, forces people to live these, like, boring, repetitive lives that just, like, keep looping over and over. And uh, if she's ever caught, if she's caught, she escapes by drowning herself again. Like if she gets caught in the music or gets caught in the thing, she has to drown herself again to appear back on Earth. And so she starts doing this again and again, making these adventures, trying to destroy the Phantom. Uh, and at the end, she defeats the Phantom. Like that's the, you know, if you kind of skip ahead, like that's how the story ends. And she defeats the Phantom and it ends the song. And she sees that when the song ends, all of the people that were living these boring, repetitive lives all begin to die and kill each other. And it like descends into this like an anarchic chaos that uh, disturbs her so much that she puts on a mask and becomes the phantom and starts the music again. Oh, God. And make everyone stop killing each other. Wow, this is a children's book. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. No, it's it's not a children's book. It's about a child. It's it's okay. a novel, um, mm. but it's by a woman named Emmeline F. Fitzroy, and it was published in right. 1936 by Torbit Books. Wait, Fitzroy is not your friend, Skid Neil's friend, right? Uh. No. no, no, no. I forgot her name. Your author friend. I thought for some reason her last name oh, was Fitzroy. No, no, oh, okay. no, no. Um. So yeah, so you know this as you go into the library. You know you can kind of like pass this on, and this is the one. Remember where the cover of the book is an inverted palace right. that matches the picture that was right. in the other book. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 So we we sit around like one of the reading tables there. 
talking in low voices and I he walks through all this doesn't have a cigarette um, he walks through like the plot of this book and then he then he shows like the picture on the cover and then the picture of the city in this history book look familiar Wait, does that, does that mean it's a real place? It's real somewhere. I don't understand. The one thing I'm hung up on is the kids. I can't understand this connection between Darabondi and the kids. Because clearly, I mean, this is further proof. It, it, the, the drowning, the to save people. I just don't understand. I mean, we have to destroy the building. Like, yes, of course. I'm, that is our only option, I think. But it just feels like I'm missing something. Like there's a way to save everyone. So Dar- Darabondi and it, sorry, was... Sorry, just real quick, at that, Bobby walks in. I just feel like there's a way to save everyone, and Bobby arrives. Uh, sorry, Skid, what were you going to say just in general? Da- so do we... Was Darabondi the suspect in the drowned children? Mm-hmm. Yes, and he okay. disappeared. Right. He disappeared, he was gone for 10 years, and in 1960, he was declared legally dead. Right. Yeah. After just being... After vanishing for 10 years. Can we find out the names of the kids? Um, yeah, but I mean, that would be a Monday activity. That would be at City Hall, you know. I think we need to know that. Something to do. <clears throat> uh, Bobby checks in and says, we need to destroy this building <laughs> immediately. <laughs> he's, he's wired on Adderalls. Hey, makeshift. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got? What did you find? We walk him through, yeah, what I found in the books. Okay, and I say, uh, I think that Darabandi believed this story to be true, or and asked some version of it to be true, and I think he was trying to send warriors against this force that's manipulating this dance and he was sending warriors to combat this this thing as he sees but what is the thing the superintendent I mean whatever it is we need to close this door keep it from ever coming into this world that's our only mission I think it's already here and even if we close this door I think there are others open I don't know that it would do any good to close this one so you're saying we need to go in there and stop the source I don't know Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. No, no, no. What, Manau, what are you saying is kind of making sense. It's it's like what you were saying before with the, the only way out is through, right? That's what you were saying. What if it's not about the physical building? What if it's like blowing up the night floors? I like it, I like it. We go in there. We blow it up from the inside. It doesn't seem to be affected by anything on the outside. Why would it be affected if we blow up the physical building? I mean, the only way out is through. You you have to go in to save the people, just like Abby in this book. You have to get there to be able to, to tangibly, you know, affect that world. I don't know. To me... <laughs> To me, that makes sense, I say, is nothing fucking makes sense. And I feel, 
absolutely insane. It's the closest thing to a plan we've got. Roger, why are you so quiet? Am I there yet? Yeah, you were there with Vicky and oh. Neil at the start. <laughs> I um, didn't know I was there. Are you asleep? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was there. I was waiting for my cue to come in. Uh, I also want to make something clear to you that I think would be clear to your characters. Mm. Um, it's very possible that what you're talking about is a suicide mission. Because you don't know how to get out of the night floors. And you don't know how you got out before. And to be in there when they're destroyed would mean that you would be in there. Yeah. So to and me, I, it sounds like a suicide mission. And I, I don't an know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what plan. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a plan because yeah. I, I mean, blowing up the night floors is like, I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that what would happen. But like personally, like, I think that we don't, you know, I think we have to just keep kind of pushing the envelope into this place because we just don't know enough to to combat it yet. So, but, I'm, but all I'm saying is like blowing up one of these portals, it's like blowing up a house's front door and the back, of, back door is open. Like there's so many portals open at different times and places that I just don't know if it would do any good. Maybe it would. I just, I really, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know. I, so I think, I think we should drown ourselves in the East River. <laughs> I think it's like, it's as good a plan as any. You know, I, I, I honestly don't know. Like that's, that's my best because, guess. Because I didn't know I was there. I'm going to say I show up now. And okay. uh, I have two coffees from a car. And uh, I walk up and I'm uh, surprisingly chipper. Hey, good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, ve- doesn't guy. make a big deal out of it. He just uh, slides one of the coffees over towards uh, Vicky, and it's exactly how she likes it. So what uh, What are we up to? <laughs> she drinks it. Uh, Bobby fills in uh, Messiah on what we've talked about so far. Mm. Mm. So we think we're going to, we might drown ourselves or we might blow up the night floors. I definitely want to know the names of these kids. What if we find out that these kids grew up to be the adults that are living in that building right now? I don't know. Is that crazy? I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> yeah, you are in a weird should, mood. I think we yeah. should find that out. Maybe we just got to Maybe we just got to go back in. Leaving was the right idea. But now I feel like we might have to go back. We don't have enough information. Maybe that that Delta Green agent that you encountered in there has some answers. Michael Whitmore got dragged through the fucking floor, if you don't remember, by something in a porcelain mask. What is wrong with you? You want to go back in there? You don't think we got enough information? I'm sorry, Murnau, how did your photos turn out that you took in there? And how are you all feeling today? Roger, I don't know why you feel so fuck... She stops. (laughs) (laughs) I'm... (sighs) Called him Roger, by the way. I know, yeah, she yeah, just, yeah, that's why We all caught that. I'm we definitely picking up on this. And I'm don't forget, Francis, he knows. told you that, that they went back to his place last night. Right, um, oh, right. Right, right. Uh, I'm waiting for for Makeshift to tell us that he spoke to our handler. Right. I mean, we don't even know that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So, yeah, But look. if you say that, I'll, I'll be like, all right, the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Roger. Sorry. Think, uh, no, it's all right. Sorry. I think we're all friends here now. Well, some we... of us, some of us more than others, it looks like. <laughs> Did you guys get home okay last night? <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem, makeshift? I don't have a problem with team Let's members that down. keep secrets. <laughs> that I have a problem with. I just talked to our handler. He let me know that uh, 
Some of us have a little bit of a closer working relationship than others. Roger gets a little close to makeshift and says, Oh, you don't have any secrets? <laughs> Look, let's just stay focused on the mission, all right? Whatever's going on between you and Ricci, I don't care. The clear and present danger is the night floors. So if you guys can keep it together, we can figure out how we're going to end this. If well, Agent we Maybelline, can... it sounds like we have a new leader. <laughs> Looks like Agent Makeshift has taken over the mission. I'm sorry, I didn't get that missive from Delta Green. Look, we've been given a job. We're here to get it done, all right? Yeah. Makeshift, we work as a team, all of us. Last time I checked, you were screaming, kill it at Roger as he shot shotgun holes through the walls of the fucking building and I pulled you back inside. I'm not closer with anyone and don't talk to me that way. We are equals in this group. And would you take a couple too many pills this morning there, makeshift? Stop it. Listen. Stop it. Everybody, stop it. Why did you talk to a handler? He reached out to me. He wants this done. What'd that piece of shit say? We have a mission. He needs this done. Why? We have to. Why? Did you ask him why? Why he needs why. this? The who knows why? Who knows what the hell is going on? All I do know is whatever's in those night floors, it's not a good thing. And no we shit. But I think stop. they know. I think they know more than they're letting on. And they're letting us walk right into our own death. Also, he's keeping tabs on us. What the fuck? He knew we were at the bar. He knew we left separately. Why is he watching us? He doesn't trust us, makeshift. That means he doesn't trust you. That's why he reached out to you. Because so he knows anything, you're the weakest of the bunch. Stop it. Hey. <laughs> if anything, we need to stick together. Is everybody done fighting? Or now you've been awfully quiet. He's just reading the book. <sighs> like as this all is, is happening. Like he just keeps referring back to the book. And I think that you start to put together a theme here as an artist who's trying to see a narrative, right? A story. You're trying to put together a story and there's so many missing pieces that it, it seems impossible to put together. But there's some unmistakable things that Neil is directly seeing here between the conversation with Mark Rourke and the book by Emmeline Fritzroy in 1936. And in both cases, it was anyone that went deeper or tried to destroy the thing or tried to greet or tried to join the thing. In either case, the result is the same. You become the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like th th that's what the, the book and the conversation with Rourke are showing you a narrative that leads in the same direction, even if the motivations are completely opposite to start. The deeper you go, the more you become the thing that you are trying to fight in Emmeline's case, right? Or at, um, Abby's case is the girl's name in the book. So it's like destroy the building or keep going back into the night floors. We're going to get trapped either way. Yeah. It's a one-way ticket. Yeah, I think I am like Murnau, Neil. Like he's try, he is trying to use the only kind of cipher that he, the best cipher that he has, to try to figure this out. Which is story. Like story is how people make sense of the inexplicable human beings. That's how we do it. So that's yeah. That's why he keeps going back to the book. He like he tr tr he's trying to use the narrative as a key to figure out what to do next. But it's still it's just not it's just not making sense. At least to me, I I don't know. Um, Vicky also makes a mental note that she wants to um talk to shit. I wrote his oh. Jim, because uh, she's at the library 
and she wants to talk to Jim, who runs the program that she read the book at with her sponsor, who gave her that weird book, Henri at the Park. Uh, and then there was also somebody named Jim, uh, I think with Murnau, with you at the bank, he was on the phone. Somebody said Jim. Mm-hmm. There was something weird. Vicky doesn't know that, obviously, but she had already wanted to talk to Jim, who runs the program, because it was really weird. Um, and she gets up, I think, when you guys are arguing, uh, she says, I need a cigarette. And she gets up to go to the desk to talk to the receptionist uh, or librarian to see if Jim is around. And uh, after a back and forth conversation, she's very confused. She has no idea what you're talking about. Jim, uh, sh- she doesn't know a Jim that uh, is in charge of that that thing. She doesn't know much about that program. You know, she's just the librarian here in this this particular area. Um, it was your sponsor that told you about it. Maybe uh, your sponsor might know more, but the, there isn't somebody that works there named Jim. Vicky's really annoyed, and she's like, "It was yesterday. They just had it yesterday. How do you not know what goes on at the library? If you work it, were you not here yesterday?" It, it is a very big library, ma'am. There it are was a right lot there. of functions that happen. <laughs> the children's reading. You know what? Forget it. Clearly, you do not know. <laughs> Clearly, you cannot help me. She's hungover and angry. She goes back to the group. <laughs> Your handler said to you, Bobby, close the gate. You said it was a gateway. He said, close the gate. That's the mission. You're kind of torn on how to do it. Um, we were, We aren't even clear which which of those doors is the gate itself other than the one we go into to get to the night floors so but there was that. also the one through michelle's apartment right right there are multiple mm-hmm. let's look at that map again um the hotel yeah, map of the building because there's some stuff there we haven't looked at in a while like man with briefcase and white shoes roses and butter Door on si- July twelfth. D- door on seven twelve makes it seem like the door moves, which would make it even harder to close. Like, if that seven twelve means July twelfth, it's like that's where the door is on July twelfth, but it could be a different place. Right, but all hmm. within the building. All within the building. Okay. So there are multiple doors. Right. But so far, you don't know of any, and you didn't see any evidence of any in there that led to anywhere other than the McAllister building. So raising the building could be the only way to actually close the door. We could bust down the door to every apartment and give everyone the option to leave. Something in that story. Abigail defeats the Phantom and becomes the Phantom, right? She Maybe sees Abigail. the world, this magical world, descend into pure anarchy and chaos when everyone is broken of the spell that gives them boring, repetitive lives. Yeah, see, I'm I'm reading this, I'm hearing this as a metaphor for regular human existence. It's like the repetitive lives, like it's the little sort of routines and rituals that we have that sort of get us through the day without really thinking about some of the larger questions. And you take those away and you force people to think about just this, this sort of cosmic smallness that the human beings represent. Open their minds to the cosmos in that way, that kind of horror <laughs> could destroy the human race. So this is this is like how I this is how I'm reading it like in this moment. It's like Carcosa is the dance. And it's right. like, t- it's taking these artists and being like, listen, you can continue to struggle and make this stuff and maybe something will happen. Or you can give yourself over to this world where you can have anything you want. All you have to do is, you know, help us power this fucking gateway. Um, and, and it will exists. destroy the world you knew and everyone you know. But who cares? You're going to live in a much better world. Uh, yeah, it kind of sounds like heaven <laughs> um, in a fucked up way. Like you get to way. you get to come in if it, well I guess it sounds like hell but in a like you want to go there like you do the devil's bidding and you get to you know have whatever it's, 
Okay, what was it? Do you want to live? Yes, would you live? I still want to live deliciously. Deliciously? <laughs> uh, was it? Did I ever, by the way, did I ever go to that, did I ever get what was in the safe deposit box? Did that ever happen? Oh, shit. You never got the key. Never got the key. Okay, I, I think- find any keys? I think we Can all we need to key? split up today and meet back tomorrow and go do the things we need to do. I got to talk to my sponsor, well, I don't tell you this, but I got to talk to my sponsor and figure out the gym stuff. And I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, tomorrow morning, first thing, I want to go to City Hall and see about these kids, see if I can get the names of the children that died. Okay. And I kind of, I mean, Joe, you can tell me if this is stupid, but I kind of want to talk to Abigail Wright's father, who's the one that reported her missing. Yeah. Okay. Could I track him down today? You uh, You can try. Um... You got to get the number of somebody that you don't know that lives on Long Island. Um, yeah, because I would go out to the island and show up at his house. Okay. So I think that'll be a more fun scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I think I'll, I'll I guess I'll go back to the bank. Uh, the bank is closed. Oh, on, on Monday. On Monday. Yeah. On yeah. Monday. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Um, and Bobby, what are you doing? Um, Bobby's dead set on destruction. He's gonna try and commandeer as much explosives as possible from his work. (laughs) He's getting C4. You know what? He's he's preparing. This is very interesting because let me just reflect really quick for everybody, for every audience member. It's 1994. (laughs) Bobby is buying... A ton of explosives, presumably putting them in a big van and driving them around, oh, I don't know, say downtown Manhattan, perhaps parking it in a parking garage and everything's fine. Holy crap. This always works out well. Yeah, Yeah, we need cover. We need a cover. I see what yeah. this mission really is. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and remember, he, so, he has a meeting with Agent Marcus, the handler, yeah. the oh. next day. And the you, next day. And you said you were going to bring everybody. So that's Monday. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, right. Hopefully coming yeah. to some sort of decision. But it seems like you're not coming to a decision. Everyone's going off in different directions. Right. That's fine. Right. Let's, 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 let's have that final conversation in front of Marcus. He's not telling us something. Yeah. Let's make something the meeting. Later in yeah. the day on Monday, let's do our shit and then yeah, yeah. meet with Marcus at like you know five p.m. Okay. And either way, whatever we find, we'll have explosives ready to just <laughs> <laughs> blow that thing to hell. It's, it's, it's going to have say, either way, regardless of what explosives. happens. I feel like we can never not need C four. Yeah, so you're, you're never like, like I'm glad I don't have a van full of explosives <laughs> right now. <laughs> right. I have a couple of grenades and a foot locker near my bed. Excellent. Um, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it didn't come up. Uh, I, it's on my character shoot. I have a lot of things in that footlocker. I'm glad he didn't search when I was in the bathroom. Jesus. Um, <laughs> as we're splitting up, maybe Roger will go over to Vicky and be like, um, so I'm going to head out to the island, try and find uh, Wright's father. Do you, uh, you, you want to get dinner or something later? Why are you asking me that? We just had the conversation. They know that I went to your place. Why would we get dinner? Let them watch. (laughs) (laughs) So that I can find them. Somebody's watching. I want to see them. Plus, you gotta eat, right? Um, I'll let you know. Okay, it's early and I got a lot I want to get done today, but um, let me know when you're back in off the island and... and yeah, yeah, yeah. You have my number. Right. Good good luck out there. Yeah. Good luck out there. When Roger gets outside, though, he does want to do an alert, alert, alertness. Just to see, is anybody, any vans parked, weird cars parked, people sitting in there watching as they all come out? Okay. And he's just lighting a cigarette while he's doing this, but he's using his just hyper awareness to try and uh, tell. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Twenty-one under eighty. 
Looking around, it's uh, <laughs> Sunday outside of uh, 42nd <laughs> 5th. There's lots of people around, but you don't see anybody suspicious. Anybody watching you? Any car, odd cars, anything like that? You seem fine. It's going to cross the street and uh, just start walking along the street, like looking into the See if anyone's sitting in the driver's seat of any of the cars. So he's like walking in the street, just uh, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. Yeah, he just hears just a lot of horde of a bus, just like <laughs> on Fifth <laughs> Avenue <laughs> behind you. Roger just <laughs> slides between two cars and it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> bus drivers. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, yeah. You see, uh, two, two different cars. Uh, one is a white, uh, sedan. The other one, a black town car. Um, both of them have drivers uh, in the driver's seat sitting there. One is a woman in the white sedan. One is a man in the uh, black town car. Uh, he looks at the man, looks at the license plate, memorizes it, and then walks over to the woman's car and uh wraps on the win the uh the window which window the her window like her driver's side window she turns and puts his hands up like she rolls it like just a crack just like the, you know a tiny less than an inch yeah sorry sorry I, I didn't mean to startle you um do you know where I don't uh, have any money no no I don't need any money uh do, do you know where where uh Park Avenue South is? From here yeah it's it's west west of here well like one block or two blocks or east of here east of here sorry i got okay. turned around no 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 it's it's far east of here all right thank you thank you she rolls up the window and then he walks over to the car with the guy and he just stands there for a second outside the window right outside the window uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls the window down. <laughs> Can I help you with something? Do I know you? No. What do you need? Nothing. I thought I... I thought I recognized you. Get the so fuck out of here. <laughs> he starts rolling up the window. He just puts his hand on the glass. Pushes it down. <laughs> 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 Yo, what are you doing, man? And he opens up the door and like pushes it into you to like get out of the car. Okay. Get the fuck off my window. He says, watch your mouth. He pushes Jeez. you back and he like starts, you know, he's pushing you back. Right. Um, he's just going to grab the door and Roger's kind of like not in the mood and kind of push it backwards so that maybe it makes a little crack sound. <laughs> Jesus. You mean he over opens it? Over opens it. And he says, watch your fucking mouth. What's he your problem, dude? The door. <laughs> I just thought I knew you. This is put your hand in right. my window. What? You put your hand in my window. You broke my car door. Yeah, because you cursed at me and you're being an asshole. I'm being an asshole. <laughs> yeah, you're being an asshole. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta give me money for that door. You broke my door. <laughs> you're lucky I don't break something else. Keep on. See a cop starts walking over. Anyways, have a good day. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, have a good hey, day. This fucking guy, he put it in my and you can start hearing him as you like walk away complaining to the cop and the officer's like, Hey, excuse me. No, excuse man. me, Chief. Hey, excuse me. And you're no, walking it's, away and he, it's fine. Sir, Sorry, stop. It's fine. He, sir, stop walking away. He the police officer's with walking car. towards you. Uh he uh he walks over to the officer and he's like uh sorry i was oh, we got a problem by. here he says uh you you broke uh broke into his door i was walking by and the gentleman uh hit me with his door and uh so i told him hey watch it and uh, there was an altercation and clearly i'm walking away from it can i see your identification please sure and he uh shows his fbi badge <laughs> we all are we all said here, officer. I'm sorry to have uh, you on a lovely Sunday. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. He hands it back, eyeing you suspiciously, committing mm -hmm. the name to memory. <laughs> yeah. I've, what if I have right, a just, hard just, time just remembering? Just get the fuck it. out of here. Just get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. 
And he turns around and walks back to the guy like, you calm down. All right. <laughs> uh, this New York. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, he's, um, he's yeah. gone. Okay. So uh, where to go? All right. Let's go to Vicky. Vicky, you wanted to call your sponsor. Yeah, I think she's going to call Sarah um, from a payphone. Okay. Um, hello? Hey, Sarah, it's Vicky, Vichy. Hi. How are you? I need to, um, I need to meet I, up with you. Are you available today? I thought maybe we could get lunch. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Sure. Where, where do you want to go? Um, we could go to Katz's somewhere close. Okay, in, in about an hour or so, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'll meet you there. Okay, I'll see you there, honey. Okay. And uh, she hangs up, and uh, we can just go We can just go there to lunch. And so you're sitting across from her, and what are you saying? Um, after they order and, like, make small talk and stuff, um, Vicky says, um... I had, um, um, I, I, um, drank last night. And you see this reaction that's like she's trying to hold back. She just slowly nods. And, uh, I knew what I was doing. And, um... I fucked up and I just have been really, really overwhelmed and um, really confused and I just wanted to, I just wanted to not think about everything. Um, and I know, I know what this means for me. And um, I'm like, I, I just feel embarrassed. I feel, um, yeah, I just feel embarrassed. Oh, don't feel embarrassed, honey. Don't feel embarrassed. If you know why this happened, you can figure out how to prevent it from happening again, right? Yeah. Why did it happen? Um, and as she says it, you're like looking down, like kind of ashamed. And you see on the floor next to your table is a severed human hand <laughs> just sitting on the ground next, next to the table <laughs> when she says what happened. She like jolts and like bangs her forearm into the side of the table <laughs> she's like fuck ow yeah, sanity check <laughs> damn it oh man uh 30 under what's my current 55 yeah hands not there it's just <laughs> gone the second you hit your elbow you blink and it's gone are you all right she reaches over yeah I'm, ow i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine i slipped off the table ow um what happened I just feel like um, I've been having like um, like anxiety attacks almost, you know, and I, I have a friend um, who deals with that and I don't think I've ever really had it before. So I haven't really known what it is. But now that I think about it, I think it's kind of like what he has. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, um, you know, I was thinking though, the thing that, I felt really peaceful doing that um, that children's reading program that you volunteered me for. Uh, I actually wanted to talk to you about it and see if maybe I could talk to um, Jim, the guy who runs it, who you said, to, to see if I could, you know, volunteer on a more permanent basis or, or those other programs. Jim, um, I've never met Jim, but I know that he... Im has a bookshop on uh, the east side, I think in the village, the east village. Um, I can try to get an address for you. Um, yeah, I, I think I could get that for you. 
Um, I think I'm going to divorce Christopher. Okay, good. Good. And remember, anxiety, it's real, and it happens to everyone at some point or another, but we do not medicate with alcohol, right? Right. <laughs> there are other ways to deal with that problem. Right. And we'll work on it, right? Right. Yeah. Great. Um, all right, well, you got the information you're looking for there, so... Let's let's cut out of that scene and uh, go to Bobby. Bobby, who is <coughs> attempting to requisition explosives uh, from <laughs> the CIA's uh, deep data banks, uh, yep. which is great. Yep. It's great. Um, back at the UN office. Back at the UN office. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, in order to do that, you're going to have to make some rolls. Um, yeah. in order to get this stuff requisitioned properly. Uh, so there, there are a few different ways you can go about it. I'm trying to think of what your best, what your best skills are um, to, yeah. I mean, yeah. normally it'd be like bureaucracy. I'm yeah, bureaucracy. yeah, I That's think bureaucracy. Thinking. Bureaucracy, yeah, right. Right. which bureaucracy. I'm pretty, pretty... Bobby's pretty good at that's he's got a he's got a sixty at that. Yeah, Ooh. that's great then. Yeah. I would think. Alright. I'm gonna roll brief bureaucracy. Okay. Ooh, fifty nine. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow, fifty-nine wow. under sixty. Wow. That was just there. Wow. Nice. Uh fifty nine um, baby. Under sixty. Um Okay. Uh what sort of time frame do you put on this requisition? Because that's another thing. It's like the faster you need it, the more uh, intense the request is, right? Oh, well, I mean, we're going to go see the handler on Monday. So it's got to be like after that meeting, we got to be ready to go. Like whatever we decide. So uh, it's got to be. Okay. Need, sounds good. need to rush on this. We need to rush on the C4. <laughs> I need a rush on the <laughs> Um. Okay. <sighs> Don't me, ask what it's for. All right. <laughs> give me, give me a charisma times five roll. Ooh, because like charisma. you're gonna have to talk to people to to get this done. I'm gonna have to schmooze, yeah. Uh, 40, 46 under sixty. Ooh. 46 under 60. Okay, so uh, using your smooth talking, you're able to get it within a day. Yeah. Nice. So yes. uh, yeah. you can get this stuff the next day. I know a guy. I know, you know a guy. A guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got this guy. Yeah. Out in Brooklyn. He's got C4. No, no problem. You need it by Thursday, by Monday? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, okay, great. And let's go to... Wait, are we... This is still Sunday, so... Yeah. It is. Um... Was Neil doing anything Sunday? I th I think if we're splitting up, I think he's just he's going to go back to his apartment, and he's going to be he's going to be spending time with the books, and he's going to be incorporating images from them into his storyboard as he's kind of studying them. He's sort of incorporating the story of Abigail into his film project, and. That that takes up his whole day. And while we see him doing that, putting these like storyboards in of Abigail, as he like something dawns on him that seems to just fit exactly right. For the first time all day, the voice returns. <laughs> and you just hear Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It is, isn't it? And he's like and he's like talking he, to himself. In, yeah, in yeah, cuz he wasn't sure if he really like he was so drunk last night. He wasn't really sure if he was misremembering or So it's just like, "Oh, it's back." Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it is interesting. Isn't it? Go ahead and roll sanity. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Is Myrna out? He's about to become oh, the Phantom. Is right? that what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 65 over 50. 65 over 50. Okay, so you take a point of sanity damage. Oh, you can take okay. it or you can project it. It's up to I'm going to project it onto Johnny again. Oh, All right, so where is she at now? Johnny. Johnny. Uh, well, I was thinking about opening with a scene with her, but I'm going to kind of save it because I think it's going to be kind of extreme. So it's like, I don't want to like, the, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the scene I have in mind, it's like not worth like two points. Hmm. So it's I, more I, than I, two I points. Oh, because yeah, so you've only two projected scene. two onto her. Yeah. Cause I only rolled one for the last time. Yeah. Got it. So this is a total of two. So oh right, you I, took seven, but you only rolled one in the the healing process. Yeah, yeah, I'm sort of saving them up until it justifies like the scene I had in mind. But yeah. okay, <laughs> we'll take another point of willpower point damage uh, <clears throat> right now, and then when you guys rest tonight, remember you'll heal one d six of your will point power damage. All right, going into uh, into Monday. Um. Okay. Great. So we can go to the next day. So let's go the next day. Uh, or no, no I, today you wanted to go out to Long Island today. Yeah, if oh, I was yeah. able to track down Evergo Wright's father. Uh, okay. Well, give me. Um, uh, this is going to be tough, man. I mean, it's like you're, you're, you you got to go find this guy. You're not you're not a cop. You don't actually have access to all these databases and everything. No, but I can look. I can look all over the island for rights. Maybe I don't know. There's no way good internet like there is today like i could find this guy on facebook well also wait we had all of abigail's stuff in her apartment did we never find anything that had any information with her father no you didn't find an address or a phone number or anything like mm. that. you found a picture you saw a picture of him with his uh, presumably his wife mm. with a clown hand <laughs> coming oh, into the photo shit. Yeah. Um, at least you know what he looks like right you do know what he looks like Oh, so that's um, Abigail's dad. Yeah, that that's picture. that's Abigail's dad. It says mom and dad. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, yeah. So this this isn't a silly follow up here. Um, how, do, how do I? There must be a way to get this information. Yeah, it's just uh, a roll. Yellow, yellow I mean, pages. But you don't really have, you know those those skills i mean um i mean could i have found more uh at the library uh while we were there just more articles about abigail's disappearance this is like uh uh she is uh, her parents from flushing queens you know to like maybe get a city name or something can i roll yeah for that? yeah i think you could probably get that so um i'm probably not gonna get it if it's i don't have like i don't have good scores in intelligence based things I have yeah. an intelligence of eight. I mean, it's just the reality of the situation. You got to think about the reality of the situation. How are you getting out there? You know, like if you know the town, how are you getting there? Um, I mean, do you have the cash to buy a car? Are you going to rent a car? Are you going to take the train? But does, you know, are you going to walk four does he miles? Have a car? You don't have station? a car, do you? Uh, no, I would. No, I I haven't said that I have a car. And it's, so, yeah, I would I would take the train and then take a cab from the train. Just show up at their doorstep. It is a bit crazy. I mean, yeah, I've got a 10 in criminology. Uh, yeah. You know I, who I, might be able to help you, Bobby? But you got to ask nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys just had a big old blowout. Fight. Yeah. You got to ask nice. A 10 in history. Yeah, it's just not my, it's not my jam. But I do think that there is something worth mining here um so you know we'll see if, just for the hell of it yeah i rolled a 32 i have nothing like even basic intelligence uh, I, I passed an intelligence check but that's the best that i could do <laughs> with a 32 so I, you know he's just fixated on this um so he's gonna go back and uh hopefully wait for a phone call from vicky uh, okay, so does Vicky call him Sunday night to hang? Um, I think Vicky is having a really hard time being alone because of her relapse and because of the fight with Christopher. And I think she does call Roger if so if odd. anything, just to have like company. And Roger has been so nice to her. 
and she just wants somebody to be nice to her right now. He picks up on the first ring. Hello. <laughs> Rod- Roger? Oh, hey. Um, I was just, uh, just cleaning Jimmy's cage. Uh, <laughs> do you like Italian food? Is that a joke? <laughs> there is a, uh, well, now, you're going to probably think this is silly. Um, but there's a place called Carmine's. <laughs> on, <laughs> on, it's on Broadway. And, uh, uh-huh. 44th Street. Uh, oh. I don't know. It's probably not authentic like, <laughs> like your grandmother used to make, but uh, the ambiance is nice. And uh, I would like to take you to Carmine's this evening. Okay. Yeah, I can make I can make that work. Maybe you could read the menu for me. <laughs> Translate it from your mother country. I'm what actually, is this ravioli? <laughs> I'm actually only 60% Italian, but don't tell anybody that. I'm going to tell all my friends. No, I don't. I don't really have any friends. Um, all right. Do you want to just uh, meet there? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what time? Maybe six? Six. I was going to say six. Um, do me a favor. When you get out of the train station, uh, I'm assuming you'll get off at 96, be careful walking down there. Just uh, keep an eye out. Anybody following you? Anybody looking at you? Anything strange? I'll be doing the same. Okay. Yeah. I can do that, of course. See you at six. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Hang on, hang on. Bye. <laughs> and she does wear something little sexy. Oh, uh, oh, no, oh, I mean, she so wears long. a nice dress instead of like her slacks and her blazer. And she like gets dressed up a little bit and she never gets to dress up. Uh, and she does do what he says and uh, I'd like to do um, I guess uh, search or what alertness work? alertness yep oh 29 under 50 29 under 50 you notice you're being followed <laughs> yeah she stops to have a smoke she's looking <laughs> around can I is it by a person, a car? It's by a car. Um, do I recognize the car? Black sedan? No, it's just a black sedan, yeah. She walks a little further and sees if, if it kind of like rounds the corner. Yep. Sedan. You follow it. It rounds the corner. Uh, she's going to write down the license plate number in a little piece of paper in her purse. Hmm. Uh, you and can't see the license plate number. Oh. It's on the back of the car. I don't oh. think they put them on the front of the car until later. Damn it. He's 90s. Even um, if they did. Um, <laughs> this one doesn't uh, have it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they did. Yeah, this one doesn't have it. Okay. Um, shit, I don't know if I should Because I'm picturing off. you far enough away that you can play it off like you're not seeing this tail. Ha, like, yeah, Are you gotcha, acting gotcha. like you don't see the tail? Or are you just yes. Like, <clears throat> no, she's acting like she doesn't see the tail. <laughs> and I think... Um, she waits outside the restaurant to see if Roger is like going to show if she showed up before him or vice versa just so she can give him like the high sign so she's smoking outside okay. the restaurant and the car is two a block and a half away basically just watching it parked okay. on the side of the road and Roger you show up okay and uh, was anyone following me or do I see this car here? go ahead and uh, roll alertness yeah 48 under 82 no no one's following you Okay. So Roger, uh, Caesar, and like, he, he doesn't know if he's supposed to go in for a hug. And so it's that awkward, like, <laughs> hey, uh, but he. Give a tap and yeah. inside of the face kiss, like a. He, he, he holds you in though, close with his massive arms. And he says, anybody follow you? There's a black sedan two blocks down. So this is the place. Um, 
Let's go inside. What about the tail? Gotta figure that out. I'd like them to get a little closer. Okay. She puts Actually, her cigarette out. Maybe we work up an appetite. Follow me. And he starts bringing her down Broadway. Like, puts out his arm to walk her down the street. Takes his arm, walking down the street. And he's like, this is 91st Street. <laughs> this is a pet store. Uh, it comes after 90th. Before 92nd. <laughs> um, walking towards the car. Uh, no, walking away from away. the car. So making the car follow. Uh, and he will... Uh, turn down uh, you know across the street go to the other side of the street and turn down a street that the car could actually go down not a one way street where it would be stuck does the car keep following us? Mm -hmm. okay Um, so he gets about halfway down the street and he's like here we go and he walks out into the middle of the street right in front of the car (laughs) because now it can't go anywhere unless it runs Roger over Mm -hmm. and he just stands there staring through the windshield (laughs) (laughs) still got the shades on (laughs) six cards 605 p.m. (laughs) car door opens agent Marcus emerges Oh. oh so let me guess. You like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you're breaking protocol. You, you're not focusing on the mission. What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? And he looks over at Vicky. Why are you following us? Because you're out here. What? Dining. What are you, what are you dating? And then just like, this car like honks behind is pulled up right behind. And he's like, just get in the car, get in the car. And he sits down and gets in and closes the door and, and doesn't do anything for a second. Car behind him. Vicky waves at the car behind him. All right. And she and, and, gets and into the car. You want to get in the car? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll get in the car. <laughs> All right, so the two of you get in the car, and he just starts driving. <laughs> he just starts. Uh, he just starts driving. Says, "Do you understand that the rules are in place for a reason? That you're not supposed to know who each, where you, each other lives, and and, and 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 what your names are, and and, and what your lives are, and everything." And then he Why? turns down a street. Why? Why plausible so deniability important? plausible deniability the things that you see the things that you experience you, you got to make sure you can walk away from them walk away from everything you, nobody can find out who you are it's, it's dangerous information you could be blackmailed you could be uh, and he's just like sweating and shaking and and, and driving you down uh, 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 I don't know the West End Avenue I want to make one thing clear I don't trust you Good. Good. I trust the people that I'm working with on this case. We are putting our lives in each other's hands. And if I want to go to dinner with someone or a drink with someone, I am free to do that without you tailing me. I'm telling you because you broke up the meeting. We never, we never finalized how we were going to meet or, or how this was going to, going to uh, get resolved. I don't even know what your plans are. We you, broke you, up the meeting. You ran off. You've you, been nervous since the day that we met you. You've been shaken. He said that it was we were being followed, and 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 after that, nobody was following me. We weren't being followed. I figured you were up to something. And he and he's like looking at you, Roger. And Vicky looks at you, Roger. I got a bad feeling. Why did feeling. you break up the meeting? Because I had a bad feeling about it. I had a feeling that we were being watched. And I've had a feeling about you ever since we met. I think you're hiding something. And as for what goes on in our personal lives, that's none of your business. Come with Because when this is all said and done, I'm not walking away from her, from anyone. Look, 
I don't care about your personal lives. I just know that the... I just know that Delta Green has these structures in place for a reason. You can't just throw this stuff aside. You, you act like you know what you're doing here, and you don't. How many agents have you sent in? How many agents are in the program to try to figure this out? How many have gone in before us? Because I have some questions of my in own. In yeah. where? Bef you in mean on man. this mission before you? Yeah. Yes. None. None? What are you talking about? So you don't know anything about Michael Widmer? No. <laughs> That's... He wouldn't, because it's from... It's from what? It's from what? <laughs> it's... Not from... Right now. And right now is what's important, and you don't need to know about what it's from. If you don't know, how are you supposed to protect us? You tell us to keep everything secret. What do you know? You're bad at your job. <laughs> Pull over. <laughs> You're yeah. bad at your job. Pull You're not the fucking it car done. over. Pull, Pull over. the fucking car over. You heard over. the lady. He pulls off an exit of West 10th Avenue. Pulls up to a light. You two are getting a little too out of hand. <laughs> and let me tell you something. When you start getting unhinged, and you're acting a little unhinged. It might mean the job's getting to you. And if the job gets to you a little too much, they're gonna come for you. So get the job done tomorrow and get out of this mission. The operation is over. Bobby told me you know what happened. He told me you already know where Abigail is. If you don't finish it now, Delta Green is going to see you as making it linger, and they're going to come for you. The second you find something unnatural, you destroy it. And he's like, really like intense, shaking with fear. We have a dinner reservation. <laughs> Bye. Get we will talk car. tomorrow at 5 p.m. at our scheduled meeting time with the entire team. Do not follow me again, or as a police officer, I will place you under arrest outside of Delta Green. Do you understand me? You're losing your mind. Shut up. You have no idea what we've been through. You have no idea what I've been through or who I am. Yeah, so shut up. Mouth. Watch your mouth. I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. And she slams the back of the sedan door. <laughs> <laughs> oh She's losing her mind. Yeah, this, 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 this is so her like, crazy. <laughs> this is so fucking nuts. I just like, well, now I am hungry. Fucked up a nap. And as they're walking away, he says, um, I don't know if you picked up on this, but he, uh, he started to call Delta Green something else. He said, the, it made me think of when we ran into, uh, Widmer on the night floors. He referred to it, referred to it as something else, didn't he? Program. Program. That's what he was about to say. Something isn't right. And I'll tell you one more thing. When this mission is over, I intend to see you as often as you will let me. And for as long as you allow me, I will not leave your side. This is so intense. Vicky's like, <laughs> she doesn't even know what to say. Like, she's going through a divorce and she's yeah. like, ah, uh, that is like romantic, but at the same time, like, I feel yeah, like I'm in a prison. It's a little um, scary. She just kind intense. of like smiles. <laughs> she says, um, 
come on, we're going to be late and I'm hungry now too. Also, I got to go. I got to get home. I have, I got to be up early tomorrow. So let's, um, let's eat. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Don't, uh, fill up on bread. Uh, all right, so I mean, do you want to play out this this dinner? <laughs> I'd like to play out the entire <laughs> no. yeah, play out every ordering. every are getting, course. Are you getting the antipasto? What's what's happening? What are the specials tonight? <laughs> Joe, what are the specials? <laughs> So, are, <laughs> Joe, did you prepare the specials? Yeah, from the what's the waiter's name? <laughs> we have an incredible buffalo mozzarella. Actually, I don't uh, like this table. Could I get moved to that table over there? <laughs> what is the end? <laughs> what is the end uh, of at least this night? For Christ's sake, uh, are you guys? Are you going? Are you going home, Vicky? Yes, Vicky's going home. Okay. Oh. What are you going to talk about at dinner? Are you going to oh. talk about all in depth about your real lives? Are you going to talk about Christopher and your divorce? Are you going to talk about your girlfriend <laughs> that you're currently seeing? Oh, Roger, you can't. Do you talk, do you talk about that? It doesn't come up. It doesn't come up. <laughs> are you seeing anybody? Seeing you. <laughs> it does come up, as it turns out. I'm seeing you right now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> she... She doesn't. Talk. <laughs> she doesn't talk about Christopher. She doesn't talk about AA. She does not talk about the personal stuff. If anything, anything personal, she talks about like, oh, when I was a kid, like, oh, because he joked about her grandma, and maybe she talks about like Italian stuff and like whatever. But very light, and she's super nervous and weirded out by the handler. Though she was very pissed at him over dinner, she's thinking about what he said, and she's kind of realizing like. Okay, but he's right. I'm not supposed to divulge personal information. Like, we aren't supposed to fraternize, and it is to protect us. And what the fuck am I doing? And what is going on? And, like, she feels this, like, mental weight of everything affecting her day-to-day. And I think that's why when they wrap up dinner, she says, you know, this this has been really nice. Um, you know, would love to see you again, but, like, let's focus on the mission. I need to go home and we will talk tomorrow. And Roger doesn't push it. He's obviously, you can tell in his face, he's not happy about it. Cause like, he doesn't want to be alone. Uh, and he really likes you, but uh, he understands. And he was like, when the wine list came over at dinner, he gave it right back to the waiter. Um, he, he punched the not. waiter in the face. Slammed <laughs> 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 his face into a wine glass. Punched that wine list one more time. Fucking <laughs> time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like into the table. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, he he gets it, and he's like. Uh, Right. Well, uh, it, it, that whole thing with the handler it ruined dinner. Um, it ruined the day. <laughs> ruined and dinner. So he's just, uh, you know, he lives pretty close, and uh, you know that's why he had the date there because he was hoping that she would just come on over after. But he's like, "See you tomorrow. Big day. Big day." Yeah. Hey, if mm. he turns around, huh? She changed her mind. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> Uh, thank you again. I really do appreciate it, and this has been really, really nice for me. It's important um, when we get wrapped up in these missions to feel human again. It's something that my uh, sergeant taught me back in the day. You have to take those moments out when everything's turned into shit around you. Just remember you're still flesh and blood. One more thing. Um, I know we're not supposed to talk about personal stuff and like we're already breaking protocol. How old are you, Roger? Should be an easy question. I think my license says I'm 27. <laughs> Thank but, God. uh, just doesn't feel right, if that makes sense. I was really worried you were like 22, so this is actually fine for me. Okay, good night, Roger. I'll talk to you tomorrow. What was it, the 17 <laughs> orgasms? <laughs> good night, Roger. All right. 
Good eye, Roger. Okay, so uh, let let's cut to, <laughs> let's cut to <laughs> Skid is crushing it on these <laughs> gifts tonight. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, rise on a party. Love a good party. Mm. Mm. Ballroom. Well dressed people, dancing, music, smiling, glasses clinking together, and Vicky sitting at a table, abandoned by Christopher, over on the side, talking to a man with a briefcase at a bar, a small mini bar. Up ahead at the head table is Vicky. And Christopher, she's at her own wedding again. She turns, looks for Abigail. No Abigail. Christopher, from the head table, stands up. And he's just smiling and scanning the room and suddenly locks eyes with Vicky. Smiles brightly. You, Vicky, the Vicky that's sitting out in the audience, out in the crowd, rather, gives a little wave, smiles, starts walking down from the sort of raised table, raised area, down, and begins crossing the floor. Vicky looks, knowing kind of what this place is, and sees no strings, no marionettes. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to be flesh and blood. They've got the, the reddish glow of life beneath their, beneath their skin. What do they call it in vampire? The blush of life. Something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he walks. You just, you're almost paralyzed as he's just like walking up to you with a smile on his face. And he comes over, pulls a chair out and sits down next to you. He says, you have to come back. You have to come back. She looks towards the guy with the briefcase. Is he still there or? Yeah, he's with the other Christopher talking. Your She's... Christopher. This seems like a your Fake. old Christopher. The Christopher you married. Ah. Not the Christopher that, you know. Um, she points she points to him. And I don't know how the dream feels if it's like, you know, she's talking in slow-mo or like she can't say what she wants to say. Like dreams are so weird. But she points to the guy with the briefcase and, and she says, who is that? He turns and looks. That's the salesman. Life insurance? Encyclopedias. <laughs> what? He smiles. Oh, and she's like, that makes perfect sense. And uh, she <laughs> she says... Well, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Did you hear I, it, Troy? What color shoes does he have? <laughs> yeah, he's got white shoes. Man with briefcase and white shoes. Fuck! Wait, what's that from? The it's map! From map. Oh. Okay, so he's got white shoes, mental note taken. White shoes, man with briefcase. Um, and she says... And they're in the ballroom, right? That That mm -hmm. is where... Okay. And she says, uh, where's Abigail? Around. Hmm. You should come see her. <gasps> and you should bring all your friends. I want to talk to her now. You have to come back first. Where's Christopher? What do you mean? Where's Christopher? He's right there. He points, you look over, and Christopher's over there, and he's just carousing with the man with the briefcase. It's like <sighs> talking, laughing. There's a young girl next to the two. There's two girls that are like chatting with the two of them. Neither are Abby. Uh, she wants to, to like reach towards this Christopher's face. And like touch it or like feel for like the edges, you know, like of a mask or something, 
Something's okay. wrong. Roll a pal times five. Oh, God. <sighs> 90 above 65. Yep, so instead of reaching out, you just continue to stare at him. And he just, he just says, kind of gestures generally to the dance floor. Have you seen it? The ballroom? And as your eyes turn to where he's gesturing, like the dance floor in general, you notice under everyone's feet, and like this large, is, is this large, you wouldn't notice it without specifically looking for it. And you see the yellow sign <sighs> is painted on the floor under <clears throat> that everyone is dancing on. Oh he's my like, God. <laughs> you need to bring them all back <laughs> and show them all. She looks for the nearest. Gesturing to the dance floor. She looks for the nearest punch bowl. Is there a big punch bowl? Yes. <laughs> she runs toward it. <laughs> Panic she punch bowl. Puts her <laughs> head into it. And tries to drown herself in the punch bowl. <laughs> she needs to get <laughs> out of this dream. Roll pound times five. <laughs> Camera <laughs> view from below the punch bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> 43 under 65. She <laughs> puts her face into a punch bowl and you try to breathe in. Yeah, she purposefully tries to drown herself. As horrific as that is in a dream. That sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds awful. Uh, yeah, you purposefully try to drown yourself and deliberately pull the water in. And when you do, <gasps> you wake up and you are in your bedroom. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> Alone. Alone. <laughs> Alone. And there's um, a little bit of street light coming in from the window. And you can see there's something on your wall. Something that's not normally there. Just, there, just like sleepily, you know, like looking. And then she reaches for the light, the side table light. You turn on the light. And you see the yellow sign is drawn <laughs> on your wall. Oh, and it no. says, show them. Oh, show my God. Them. Oh, show, no. Oh, show no. Them. Show them. Show them. <gasps> like eight or nine times down the line. <laughs> oh, and we'll God. see you next time. No. Oh, should have gone to Roger's place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs>